Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Can everybody please stand? Hallelujah. It's prayer time in the city. Glory be to God. We need every heart praying and really crying out to God. Really crying out to God. We need to know that we know God. So many is happening. So many things are happening. Father, we just come unto you this morning, God. Father, take our hearts. Glory be to God. God, cleanse our hearts this morning. Glory be to God. Those stony hearts, God. Mm. Father, we need you to turn them in the flesh. Father, we crying out to you. Mercy, God. Mercy, Jesus. God, you continue to give us mercy even when we don't deserve it. God, we don't come enough before you. We don't come, glory be to God, to the throne of grace. God, so many of us go day by day, moment by moment, without seeking your faith. God, seeking your face, God, where we need to go, what direction we need to take. Glory be to God. God, I'm seeing the people. Glory be to God. God, they're straying away. Your word never lie, God. You said in your word there will be a great falling away. Father God, but I come today, glory be to God, encouraging the people to hold on. Hold on and don't give up. Don't give up on God. Glory be to God. Because he won't give up on you. Father God, we crying out holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy. Glory be to God. We need to be holy people. Glory be to God. God of the people of God, they're getting away from holiness they're getting away from holiness, God. And they lean into their own understanding. Glory be to God. No one, glory be to God, seem to want the real truth anymore. God, but we will tell the truth. Glory be to God. God, people are getting angry. Angry, this word is at an angry state, God. God, they're letting the devil use them over and over. Even people that call themselves Christian. Glory be to God. They're angry. Why are they so angry, God? God, they're going on their own. Glory be to God. When they think they can't have their way. But God, I bind it up this morning. I bind everything up that not like God. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. God, I declare and I decree, God, those that's in you, glory be to God, that nothing will pluck them out of your hands. God, you're crying for a people, a holy people, a righteous people. God, help us to be righteous. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. Righteous, righteous, righteous. Glory be to God. God, I want to tell you, thank you. God, help us to stand in these last and evil day, God. God, help us to be that light that sitteth upon the hill. Glory be to God that cannot be hid. Glory be to God. You told us in your words to let our light shine. God, we just want our light to shine in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for the sick. Glory be to God. Those that sick, glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. God, their faith is dwindling, God. They don't trust you. They don't trust you, God. They're trusting their own self, God. They're trusting man, God. But God, bring their hearts back. Bring their hearts back. Those that are sick, glory be to God. God, heal them, glory be to God. God, begin to show miracle signs and wonders that they may believe in you. In the name of Jesus, God, we're praying for the backsliders. Glory be to God that they may come back, glory be to God. Come back before it's too late. Come back in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for those. Glory be to God who are consecrated, God. God, let them stay consecrated in the name of Jesus. Hey.
Hey, God, you said every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Glory be to God. We want to confess now that Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory be to God. We don't want to wait till that last day. Glory be to God. We want to stay on our knees now. Cry it out to you, God. Glory, I thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. God, those glory be to God. Hey, Jesus, that don't know you, that don't know you, God. Help us, glory be to God, to be the one, glory be to God, that we may touch their lives. God, we want to save people, glory be to God. We want people to be saved. We don't want to see anyone lost. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. We ask you to bless our leaders, glory be to God. One by one and name by name, Jesus, bless them, glory be to God. God, keep them encouraged. Keep them encouraged, God. Even the people, glory be to God, that's not coming to the sanctuary. Glory be to God. God, encourage the men's and women's heart. Glory be to God. Let them know that's only what they do for you, God, will last. They can't look at the outward. Glory be to God. But they got to look at the hearts. Glory be to God. We want to tell you thank you. God, we ask it for a move in the service. God, move in the service. Move in the service. Move in the service, God. God, don't let it be no more, God. God, Bishop Eugene McCray. But God, show up in him. Show up, God, like never before, God. God, give him a fresh word. A fresh word, God, that we will continue to live. That we will continue to live, God, and not die. In the name of Jesus, God, those were baptized in your name, God. God, we ask you to fill them with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory be to God. No more, God, that people will come and sit in service and act like they're saved, God, because they are just baptized. God, we're looking for an outpouring of your spirit. Glory be to God. God, we want an outpouring. We want an outpouring of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, God, and we claim in victory. We claim in victory in this place. We claim in victory, God, all over the world, God, for the ones that preaching and teaching the truth, God. Victory, God, victory. God, we pray for those, glory be to God, over in India, God. God, our foreign mission, God, all over, God, Pakistan, God, Africa, Glory be to God, these people. God, they got a hunger and a thirst after you. Glory be to God. Help God, a miracle, to have that same hunger and thirst. God, help us to thirst after you like the dead patterns by the water brook. God, my soul, my soul keep patterns after you. Glory be to God. God, we need more of you. More of you to show up. More of you to show up. Cleanse us, God. Cleanse us. We need to be clean. We need to be clean in order to stand in your presence. We need to be clean. Hey, God. God, the one on social media that's still at home, God, and looking. God, do a new thing in their home. A new thing, God, a new thing. God, draw them. Draw the husbands. Draw the wife. Uh, glory be to God that they may be lights to the children. Glory be to God. Do a drawing, God, in the marriage life. Draw. Draw, God. Ha, oh, God. Anything that was ordained by you. Satan, we come to serve notice. We bind you up and we declare and we decree, God, in the name of Jesus, that it will work. Glory be to God. In your name, God, I want to tell you, thank you. Even for the children, glory be to God, who's out there, glory be to God, who thinking they enjoying themselves, glory be to God. God, we asking you to bring them back in the name of Jesus. Safe, glory be to God, in the arms of you.
Glory be to God. We want to tell you thank him one more time, God, for all that you do. Hey, God, we thank you. We just want to tell you thank you. Our hearts are glad, God, because you woke us up this morning. Hey, God, we're not dead. You woke us up this morning. We got another chance to bring glory and honor to your name. And we just want to tell you thank you. You told us in your word, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Glory be to God, we thank you for mercy. We thank you for grace. We thank you for kindness. In the precious name of Jesus, glory be to God. Let every heart, glory be to God, say amen. Glory be to God. Man, come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. For he's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise and the glory. Amen. Listen, we're about to go into praise and worship. Amen. And this is just going to be a quick moment because it don't take all day for praise and worship. But the only way that this can work is we got to understand how praise and worship work. Praise and worship is not limited by what we have and what we don't have. The only time your praise and your worship is restricted or limited is when you fail to have a revelation of why you worship and why you praise. If you fail to have a relationship of why you're here, it's going to be hard for you to worship. Let me say that again. If you fail to have the relationship or the revelation, excuse me, of why you're here, then this worship session is not going to make sense to you. But when you have the revelation of why I'm here, then it's easy for you to worship and praise God. Now, let me say this. There is a, there's only one invitation, according to scripture, that we can give to God to invite him in. And that's praise. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Every time, watch this, catch this revelation. Every time we send up praise to heaven, we give God an invitation to say, come dwell in our midst. And the beautiful thing about our God that makes him different from Buddha and Muhammad and Medusa and all those other people that's false is he has everything we need when he comes. Oh, I wish somebody would catch that today. Our God has everything he needs when he comes. So whatever you need, if you would give him an invitation to come in, he's going to bring what you need. I need you to catch that in your spirit. He's going to bring what you need. But your invitation to him is simply praise. Praise gets God attention. He's attractive to the praises of his people. Watch this. He's not attractive to just any praise. You got to be his people. Lay hands on yourself. Say, I'm one of his. I need you to get that in your spirit, church. Say, I'm one of his. So that's so when I open my mouth today, when we open our mouth, when we lift our hands, when we clap our hands, we get to experience the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I wish somebody would get excited about that right there. I want to read something real quick. Mother McCray said at the end of her prayer, because in Psalms 136, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but one verse one through 26, it talks about, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endure forever. Oh, give thanks for the who is the God over all gods, for his mercy endure forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord who is over all lords. See, he's over your little false God. He's over your little false Lord. I, I love that about our God, that you can go ahead and set up your idol, but he'll come and kick your idol down because he's the God of all gods and the Lord of all lords. And notice what it says. It says, for his mercy endure forever. But there's a verse in there that says this. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, which punished Pharaoh and Egypt and brought Israel out of Egypt. Why? Because his mercy endure forever. Now watch this. This is where the praise come in at. What is mercy? Is when God stopped what should have happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sister Net, that's all mercy is. It's when what could have went wrong, what should have went wrong, God said, I'm going to go ahead and stop it. That's where the praise coming at. I need about the next 60 seconds. If you know that God stopped some things in your life that should have happened, think about that and give God a praise in this house. If you know it should have been worse than what it should have, what it is, but God stopped it, give him a praise on that note. 
I, like I said, this session is not for everybody. But this session is for those that got a revelation of why I'm here and what God has done for his mercy endured forever. Why am I praising him? Because his mercy endured forever. Why am I lifting him up? Because his mercy endured forever. Why am I saying hallelujah? Because somebody shall thank God for your mercy. Come on, thank God for his mercy. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where will you be? We will be like ships lost in a storm without a sail. But mercy, his mercy anchored us. His mercy kept, Oscar, his mercy kept me in my right mind. Come on, Mother Lily, his mercy kept me in my right mind. Is there anybody that thank God that his mercy kept you in your right mind when it felt like you was losing your mind? He kept you. Give God a praise for your right mind. Come on. This is the praise and worship. I know sometimes we think it's a song, but this is the praise and worship. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God. With a voice of triumph. What's a voice of triumph? It's a shout of victory. It's a shout that I've overcome. It's a shout that I've won the battle. Because he won. We won. Hey, glory to God. We're about to move on. But I just want to make sure we got that today. That the reason why we worship. Mother McCray, we don't worship because we have a band. We don't worship because we got music, soundtrack. We worship simply for who he is and what he has done in our life. That's why we worship and praise God. Egypt, uh, the Israel didn't have a band, y'all. They didn't have a saxophone all the time. But your mouth is the first instrument of worship. Oh, let me say that again. Your mouth, your hands, your feet, your body is the first instrument that God created that's why the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. What's the requirement for praise? A breath. <laughs> I said, what's the requirement for prayer? A breath. If you're breathing, then you have the right to praise God. Come on, can we lift our hands and give God the fruit of our lips in this house? Oh, come on, come on. He's here, y'all. Somebody right now has woke up this morning with their mind on Jesus. I know you're tired of your body, but I submit everybody to the authority of Jesus Christ. I submit every mindset to the authority and the presence of Christ. God, you will get glory in this house. You will get reverence. It is Father Day, and you are the ultimate Father, so we celebrate you, God, today. We give our gifts to you today. We give our adoration to you today. We, give, we extol you, King of Kings. Hey, we extol you, Lord of Lords. We extol you, mighty God. We shabak the name of Jesus because he is worthy, he is powerful, and there's nobody like him. So we as praise temple, we as praise temple, we as praise temple will praise you. The Bible says God do not dwell in temples made by man's hand. But he dwells within us. So today, Praise Temple is not this building. But you are Praise Temple today. You are the temple and there must be a praise in you. Jesus. 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 There is something about that name you are master savior jesus like a fragrance after the rain your name is Jesus, 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 let our heaven and earth proclaim, I love this part right here, King. 
down. Yes, God. They shall all pass away. Come on, church, help me say it. But there's something about that name. Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah to God. Jesus, there is something about that name. Come on, lift your hands and say, Master, Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance. Like a fragrance after the rain. Come on, what's his name, church? Jesus. Sing it, church. Jesus. Yes, sir. Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim come on kings kings and kingdom they shall all pass away but there's something something about yes God that one more time Jesus oh Jesus Come on. Jesus, there is something about that name. Come on, he's master, master, savior, Jesus. Like a fragrance after the rain. What's the most powerful name on earth? Come on. Jesus. 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 Let our heaven and earth proclaim come on kings and kingdoms kings and kingdoms they shall all pass do that again kings and kingdoms kings and kingdoms they shall all pass away. one more time kings and kingdoms Kings and kingdom, they shall all pass away. But there's something, but there's something about that name. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Help me sing that. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ our Lord. Come on, oh, come, let us. Oh, come. Let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, oh, come, let yes, God adore him. Christ our Lord. Come on, say in him is no failure. In him there is no 
I want you to think about everything he accomplished in your life. In him there is no failure. In him there is no failure. Christ the Lord. Say, I can't live without him. I cannot live without. Can that be your testimony today? I cannot live without. I cannot live. I cannot live without him cry our Lord now if you thought that that was a holiday song if you thought that was a Christmas song then you missed the whole point anytime the people of God come together we ought to come together to adore God we ought to come together to adore God. Why? Because in him there is no failure. Our God cannot fail. He won't fail. He accomplished all things well. In him there is no failure. In him there is no failure. Here in him there is no fail. Yeah, Christ, our Lord. One more song. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanks, give thee. <laughs> yes, God. I will bless thee, O Lord, for the things he has done and the victories he's won. For the blessings he's given. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will serve with my life. I will love with my heart. God deserves all the praises. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. We have come to worship. We have come to give praise. Yes, Lifting up the name of Jesus for the rest of our day. Everybody, if you know, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. With the heart of thanksgiving. Come on, you sound like a corporate church. I will bless. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Can you say that again with everything within you? I will bless. I will bless. I will bless the O Lord. Yes, God. With the heart of thanksgiving. Ooh, glory to God. I will bless the O Lord. Come on, say, with my hands lifted up. With my hands lifted. That's a sign of surrender. And a heart filled with praise. Filled yes, God. 
Oh, with the heart of thanksgiving. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless me, O oh Lord. We'll do that one more time. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise. And my mouth yes, God. With the heart of thanksgiving. Do that again. With the heart of thanksgiving. With the heart of thanksgiving. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands. And just bless God with your lips. Come on, come on. Come on, yes, yes, yes. We come to celebrate him today. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory God. Glory God. That's it. Come on. That's it. This is your time with him, not your neighbor. This is between you and God. We're getting ready to move on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Come on, with the hot, ma, uh, your mouth filled with praise, your heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, that's it. Somebody's blessing God. <laughs> Somebody's blessing God. Somebody's blessing God. This is my praise to God. We're moving on. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. This is for the redeemed folks. I was, was lost, but now, yes, God, I found, was blind, but now I see. Can you lift your hands and say that one more time? I was, was lost, but now, yes, God, I am found, was blind, but now. I see. Just one more time, bishops, come in. I was was lost, but now you praise him. I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
Thank you, Jesus. Gracious Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, we bless you. Gracious Lord, Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for worship. Thank you for praise. Thank you for the activities of our limbs, uh, the voice of our lips. And thank you, Lord, for the blood still running warm in our veins. We bless you right now. We thank you right now. Thank you for all your goodness you showed toward us. Thank you for how you cared for us, watched over us. Now bless us as we go in your eternal word. I pray that somehow somebody may be touched by your word today. That every need will be met in this building on the airway. Do it for us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I'm going to give God a praise for amazing grace. He may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I certainly honor him today, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for another chance to be in the house of God. Uh, thank God. I uh, want to say to all of our fathers today, happy Father's Day. Amen. Uh, you know, the saying is the second, uh, the second Sunday of May is Mother's Day, and all the other days are Father's Day. So today kicks off our official Father's Day. Amen. I just, I just thank God for being a father and uh, knowing what it is to father uh, children and be a part of their lives, uh, bring them up in the admonition of the Lord, making sure that in the time they spent with us, they were in the house of God. That's what real fathers do. Now those that just father children, they don't care where their children are. They don't care whether they come to church or stay at home. They'd rather put an iPad in their hand than put a Bible. And then they'll tell me that they can't understand the word. And they can put a smartphone that you can't understand. And they can understand it. But they can't understand the word. Uh, I, I don't want to ruin your day, but happy Father's Day. <laughs> I, I honor him to those joining with us on uh, media. We thank God for you being with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. I really rejoice to be a part of. Thank God for the praise and worship team. Thank you for leading us in to worship today. And uh, my soul was blessed, and I, I feel good. I feel good to be alive on this day. And, Feel good to know that God is still in control. Uh, uh, Mother McCray said that people are just evil and mean. And they, they, they just doing all kind of crazy things. And you don't even have to be doing something against them for, they to do, for them to do something against you. Uh, many of you know in December I was hit in the back of my vehicle by a lady. I'm at the light sitting still, and she runs into the back of me, and then she get an attitude and told me, I don't know how to drive. People are just mean, evil. On the other day, yesterday or the Friday, rather, I was coming out of Boniface making a left on the, uh, the, going to the Glen Highway going home. Another guy was coming down uh, Boniface, coming in the Glen Highway, which he had to yield, because my road had to right away. And he didn't exactly want it to yield, but he saw that I wasn't yielding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he finally slowed down like he was supposed to do. 
And, and talking about Father's Day, and you, you'll understand it better after a while. You know, after we got on the Glen how he passed by me, and one of his kids, a wand down the window, told me. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know what that finger means. I got four. Maybe some of you know, know what this finger means. You can tell me. Uh, but people are just mean. And they're just doing all kind of crazy things. So I try to keep to myself. I try not to teal, cheat anybody off. I don't. I stay in my own little corner. Amen. Because I'm expecting to be a father for a long time. And I don't want to deal with these mean folks out there. But I understand, and when we get through with this lesson today, I believe you will understand why society is so messed up. Amen, Amen somebody. In the book of Romans, chapter number 8, our steady text today, Romans 8, 1 through 16. If you got your Bibles, please turn there. If you don't have your Bible, get something. If you don't have your Bibles, get something. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 16. Those of you joining us, please turn. Uh, if you want to take notes, you're welcome to. Uh, we're going to be here for a little bit. Uh, we're going to go into the word for a little bit, and we'll be out of here. Amen? Amen. I know the text is in Romans uh, chapter 8 and verse 15. So Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 16, our steady text. Romans 8, verse 15, our noted text. So our noted text today state this. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You have not received the spirit of fear, the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received that spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The word Abba means father, a title of honor given virtuously to the deity in the New Testament. In the New Testament, uh, the word is a tribute to God. But in many Eastern culture, the word father is a tribute to uh, leaders of church, bishops, uh, head of families, uh, many other folks. So it, it means one that has birthed something into place or has fathered something into place. And when we're talking about God, God has always existed. In fact, the scriptures declares that everything that exists came from him. God did not come from anything because he's always been. That's why he is God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Uh, this old song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. And there's a verse that says, oh, what needless pain we bear. But the Bible says that we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. In other words, we are free. Anybody free in here today? But ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I, I, I want to use this topic today. One word, Abba. Uh, there's a gentleman that wrote a song. He, it, it's called Abba Father, something like that. And he, he, he just goes all into worship. Uh, for, the, for the sake of knowing who God is, Abba is okay. But other than that, it does nothing for you. Are y'all still with me? Yes, the word Abba means father. And we know that God is father because he created all things. Uh, 
but today being Father's Day, I decided that this would be a good day to use this word. Abba. Look at somebody say Abba. Let's move on a little further. In our study text, Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There, there, there are two directions given here, and we can go either direction. But those that are in Christ Jesus, we know that we should not walk after the flesh, but we should walk after the spirit. We only get in trouble when we walk after the the flesh. Somebody say, Abba. And then, then verse number two says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. People are doing what they are doing because they are in bondage to sin and death. There is no legislation, there is no president, there is no governor, there is no mayor that can change the situation right. of where we are. That's right. Because the people's lives are not changed. Right. And they are living according to the spirit that they are following. Yes. You are not a sinner because you sin, you sin because you are a sinner. Yes. So when you see people being mean and you see people killing people and saying all manner of things against people, it's not because they are Republican or Democrat. It's not because they are progressives. It's because they are sinners. And what do sinners do? Everybody didn't get it. What do sinners do? It's still not everybody. What do sinners do? Sin. Almost, y'all almost there. What do sinners do? Sin. Somebody just heard that one. So stop looking at people that sin Come on. <laughs> Amen. as though it's something strange. Yes, if we can just get the people of God to do what they do, <laughs> then, then everybody will be all right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, baby. Amen. Yeah. Verse, verse number three said, "For the Lord that could, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh." The the, the law this tells you what not to do. That's, that's why people that are trying to keep the Ten Commandments can't keep it. Because the law only tells you what not to do. It, just, it does not give you any authority to not do it. You can have all 20 of the commandments in your house. But if you don't have the authority against sin, you'll still wind up doing the wrong thing. Amen. Because that's what sinners. So that, that law was weak in that it was through the flesh. But God's own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He didn't come in some supernatural body. He didn't come in some disguise. But he came in the likeness of sinful flesh and, and for sin. Listen here. For sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So, so those that sin, you are condemned already. Nobody has to tell you you're on your way to hell. Your sentence has already been passed. You know, you go to trial and they, they, try, they try to find you whether you're innocent or guilty. Once they find that you are guilty, sometimes the judge will sentence you right then. Depending on the case and how much study, how much investigation, or how much time you need to put on the law concerning your case, he might give a few months and he'll come back. He'll say, I sentence you in three months. 
And so when you come back for a sentence and listen at this, you've already been found guilty. He don't come back this time to try to figure out whether you're guilty. Are y'all still there with me? He, he don't come to, to, to see what the jury said. He comes this time to punish you. Are y'all still there? Yeah. And, and, and so God says to those that sin, you, 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 you're, you're condemned already. already. Yes, sir. And if you don't get your act together, when I come back, I'm coming back not to save you again. But I'm coming back to give you punishment for what you've been doing. Uh, in fact, I'm already building the prison. Thank you, Jesus. Verse number, somebody say Alpha. And you understand why I use that word in a little bit. Uh, that the righteousness, verse number four, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. In that they could not do it by the flesh. But why? Because we have the spirit of God in us. The righteousness of the law should be fulfilled in us. We should be living the law. That's why Jesus came along on the scene and said these, on these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. If you love God uh, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And if you love your neighbor as yourself. You can fulfill the law of the prophets or the law. Law, the fulfillment of the law and, and only we can love people like you love yourself if that the love of God is in you I, I wish you hear me today the only way you can love God is that God is in you because the Bible declares that God is love so saints of God you don't learn to love once you get God in you you love I know there's some people you don't like, <laughs> but you got to love them. Thank you, Jesus. I know people do things that get on your last nerve, uh, but you still got to love them. I know they talk about you. They stick a knife in your back and they lie on you, but you still have to love them. Because you're fulfilling the law through love. Through the Spirit of God. Let's go on a little further. Well, verse number five says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Uh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. What's on your mind? Do you mind the things of the flesh or the Spirit? I can tell. Can you tell? I, you, 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 the things you mind, you get excited about. Things that you don't mind, life is so boring. You, you, one of these days, I'm just going to take the whole church. I'm going to secretly videotape you. I'm telling you now. And, and one day, we all just going to have a watch party. <laughs> and, and, and we're just going to see how you enjoy church. But people that are excited about church, people that are excited about God, you don't get bored in the house of God. You don't get sleepy in the house of God. You don't lose tension in the house of God. But you, like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in here this morning? Anybody excited to be in here this morning? I don't know about you. I could have been another place, but God gave me mercy. God gave me grace, and I walk in here this morning. Nobody had to roll me in. Nobody had to help me in, but on my two, my own two legs, I walked in here, had the activities of my limb, the blood running water in my vein and I came here to let the Lord know Lord I thank you you know how many fathers didn't make it to see this day you know how many fathers died on last year but thanks be to God who gave us the victory we are still We are still here. Mm. 
Thank you, Jesus. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Mm, Jesus, help us. Help us. Verse number six says, For by, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. One of the main reasons people are dying is carnality. They are so carnal. I mean, there's no God in them. Every now and then you find a little bit of God in somebody. But the folks that are being bred now, the generations that are coming up now, there's no God in them. They could care less about God. Right now, today in Alaska, probably 80% of the people do not have God on their mind. Some of them are fishing and sightseeing and enjoying the day. Some of them just out having a good time just being father. Carnality. Right now, you know, we, we just miss praise step and say, we're going to have a father's party. Boy, the father's in here get all excited. They start jumping up. What do you want me to bring, Bishop? What are we going to have? Where are we eating at? What restaurant are we going in? Carnality. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, help us, Lord. <laughs> Mother Watkins used to sing a song. It, it only had one word, two words. Help me, help me, Lord. How many? Four words. And that's all the words the song had in. And she would sing it about 30 minutes. And it was an upbeat song. But she would sing that song, help me, help me, Lord, help me. And we'd just go at it for a long time. Uh, and so carnality. But verse number seven says, listen at this, but because the carnal mind is an enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. I, that's why I say you cannot legislate this thing. If a person is carnal, they're going to be sinful. I said again, if a person is carnal, they're going to be sinful. They may hide and do it. They might slip around the corner and do it. But they're going to be sinful because they're carnal. And the Bible said they can't be subject to the... You're trying to make, sin, you're trying to make sinners obey the word of God. Y'all have your Bibles? Yes, sir. Turn, turn to verse number 6. Turn to verse number 7. Turn to verse number 7. You have those listening to us on Facebook, YouTube, turn to verse number seven. Churches are trying to uh, legislate people that are sinners Amen. to act like Christians. Jesus. Jesus. Read it together. Verse number seven. Let's go. Because a carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed. You, you're trying to make your children subject to God. All you need for your children is a belt. That's right. That's Bible. Yes, sir. And, and for the next 16, 17, 18 years, they're in your house. They will be subject to the word of God. Amen. 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 Bishop. That's all it takes. But they come with a legislation that says, you can't whip your children. Yes, you can. Who house they live in? The government didn't pay for your house. Better whip the devil out of them. You either whip them or they gonna whip you. As for me in my house, I will whip them. You, you're in better shape if you let Susan McCray whip you. Because she get all excited and stuff. And ah, you, you, ah, I tell you not to do. I don't say nothing. Sure let the finger do the walking. Yeah. Verse 8. 
<laughs> so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So we got hundreds of thousands of people in sanctuaries today that are in the flesh trying to please God. There are some of you that came in here today in the flesh. And you think that it's pleasing God. But it says in verse number 9, But ye are not in the flesh. The butt clause. But you are not in the flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, You are not in the flesh. But in the spirit. If so, here's the if clause. If so that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of God or Christ, he is none of his. So, so if you have the Spirit, you are a part of Christ. If you don't have the Spirit, you're none of his. Look at somebody and say, the baby is not yours. We're still talking about Abba. Somebody say Abba. And let me, let me speed through this thing. I'm, I'm going to skip down to verse number 14. Verse number 13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify or kill the deed of the body, you shall live. It becomes your responsibility through the spirit to kill the deeds of the body. Uh, there, there, there are some deeds still in you. There are some skeletons still in your closet. There are some secrets that you hadn't revealed yet. But if you through the spirit kill them, modify them, then you shall live. Choose life. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And I wanted to get down to this verse because it leads us into Abba. Abba. Verse 14, 15. For ye are not, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. On yesterday, on this past week, on Thursday, President Biden uh, signed in the law. After, after the, the House and the Senate voted, he signed in the law a new uh, holiday, uh, Juneteenth. And the history is that this, the celebration of this day originated because the slaves on the West Coast didn't receive the word of their freedom until two years later. And that's where the term Juneteenth came from. Took two years for them to realize or get the word that they were free. There are still people in the church still haven't gotten And even though there were great celebration all ever since uh, Thursday about this new holiday, but when I look around, yeah. Yeah. and I've seen a majority of our young men in prison, yes, sir. and I see our society uh, as a race is not doing what they should do, I question whether we are free. I don't care how proud you get about that day. That's right. yeah. But if you're not free, yes, <laughs> people will sign in the law anything that makes them look good. If it wasn't forced on them, we would have still be in slavery. People only act when they have to act. That's right. But now that you are free, yeah. Yeah. My God. My God. will you still be in bondage of the past? Because he said that we are free. 
not just naturally or in this world, but we are free spiritually. And, and if you hadn't gotten the news, look at your neighbor and say, in case you hadn't gotten the news, we are free. Whom the Son set free. Uh, I wish I had some excited folks in this place. The Spirit itself, verse 16, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We are children of God. So that make God our Father. Somebody say, Abba! Abba. I want to share a few things, important things of Father. Life point number one. Fathers and emotional development. Take notes. Fathers like mothers are pillars in the development of a child's emotional well-being. Look at some parent in here and say, you are important. They also look to fathers to provide a feeling of security, both physical and emotional. Somebody say, Abba. Abba. Children want to make the fa their fathers proud and, uh, and uh, involve fathers uh, or involve fathers uh, promote inner growth and strength. When the fathers are involved in the children upbringing, it promotes growth and strength. Now, you can't do that if you're not there. Somebody say Abba. Abba. Fathers and emotional developments. Anyone can father a child. You little hot pants, 12, 13 year olds can father a child. But being a dad takes a lifetime. We're not animal. We just don't have them and leave them. Come on, amen, 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 young man. Yeah, yeah, be be excited. We don't have them and leave them. Anyway, fathers play an important role in every child's life that cannot be filled by others. If you fall into this world, nobody can take your place. Nobody. I know they put them in foster care and day daycare and who care and if anybody care. But nobody can take your place. Somebody say Abba. Abba. This role can have a long or large impact on a child and help shape him or her into the person they will become because of Abba, Father. Studies have shown that when fathers are affectionate and supportive, it greatly affects a child's uh, social developments. Y'all still with me? It is instilled Overall, sense of well-being and self-confidence, it instilled overall self-being and confidence into a child when the father is there. Man, you used to think you can do anything. If dad tell you you can do it, you can do it. I, I've seen people that couldn't sing a lick. My dad said, baby, you sound good. Fathers and emotional development. Life point number two. Fathers set the bar for relationship with others. You know why so many people's lives are messed up, tied up, tangled up, wrapped up? Because fathers are absent. They have nobody to look to to set 
a bar on how should I deal with this? How should this man treat me? <laughs> Are y'all still with me? All right, the only somebody I ever known was mama. Some of the girls. And all of a sudden they go out there and try to try find love in all the wrong places. Because there was nobody. Fathers not only influence who we are inside, but how we have relationship with people as we grow. Fathers. Somebody say Abba. Abba. The way a father treats a child will influence what he or she looks for in other people. Friends, love, spouses will all be chosen based on how the child perceived the meaning of a relationship with her father. You, you often wonder why, and I know you, we don't have nobody in here, why you can't get along with a man. I'm talking to them people out there. <laughs> we don't have that kind of stuff in praise. Them. We're praise them. <laughs> Look back at your father. If he was there. If he wasn't there, then it, it has scarred you emotionally for life. But look at somebody and say, there is, there is hope. The pattern the father sets in the relationship with his children will dictate how his children relate with other people. Fathers and their daughters. Young girls depend on their fathers for security and emotional support. Dad, did you all know that? A father shows his daughter what a good relationship with a man is like. You know what you do for daughters. Thank God I just got one. <laughs> I never forget that Donna was a big child. Probably the size of the Serenity or maybe larger than that because how old is Serenity? No, Serenity. No, that is just Shea. Shea. <laughs> She was larger than Shea because she was over six. We were living here in Alaska. I took her in to Walmart, and she was in my arm, hanging there. <laughs> and we walked past something, and, and Donna says, you know, Daddy, uh, daddies buy things like that for their daughters. <laughs> and she walked right out with it. Why? Because I, I was showing her what a man does for a woman. Yeah. Y'all missed that. If, if you can't show your daughters how they should be treated and how special they are, they'll never know how a man should treat them. You don't marry somebody for Y'all get it? Yes, if y'all don't, don't get it, I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> the, Lord, the Lord didn't tell Adam that he needed Eve. But after he got Eve and, he, and the Lord gave them the commandment and tell them that they should uh, be over everything. Y'all stay with me now. He said, then he gives them a commandment that be fruitful and multiply. So, so the, the reason for marriage, the Crawford family stand up. <laughs> see, see, that's the reason for family. I know you try to put that other thing in it. But the reason for marriage is to be fruitful and multiply. And you only need that once a year. I know most of you are on the other side. That's where you mess up. 
Because after a while, when that is no longer any good. Well, Pastor, I think it's time for us to end this thing. Yeah, right. Tell him, baby. A father that is lo loving and gentle, his daughter will look, will look for those quality in men. If your daughters are always picking people, beating her up, knocking her side of the head, then you need to take a good look at her and her father's relationship. Because anybody that enjoy whipping, <laughs> something wrong with you. You're, you're, you're mentally disturbed. It used to be a saying back in the old days, I don't know whether, I don't think women use it any longer. If my man no whip me, he don't love me. Now they say to my woman, don't whip me, she don't love me. <laughs> if a father is strong and valiant, he, she will wrote, uh, rate, uh, relate to men with the same character. How you treat your daughters determine what she look for in a man. Fathers and their sons. Unlike girls. Sons will base their relationship on the father's characters. Boy, boys model themselves after their father's character. So how you act. How you act will determine how your sons act. That's what I, I wish I had that camera. I would, it would just, it's, it's in shipment now. It's supposed to be here this week. I'm going to get this praise party going. If the father do certain things in church, son does it. Your son will imitate you to the bone. Why? Because they mock, they imitate your character. That's why it's very important that fathers have a positive character, a godly character. Because whatever your son sees in you, they will try to do it. Boys will seek approval from their fathers for, from a very young age. As human beings, we grow up by imitating the behavior of those around us. If a father is caring and treat people with respect, the young boys will grow up much the same. Much the same. Not, not saying all of them going to do it. One thing I, I could say about our children, as, as bad as they be sometimes, <laughs> people in the street, people everywhere, Say your kids are so marital. If one thing they ever gotten from us is they treat people with manners. They don't say to grown up, yes, what's up, man? Yeah, 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 man. You no, yes, sir, no, sir. And some of the grown ups, you don't have to call me yes, ma'am. No. Y'all better get off of that stuff. I'm going to be watching those houses because I believe y'all on that stuff. <laughs> let, let children be children. There were so many greenhouses coming up. I got afraid one day. I left the church and they had painted subway green. I said, oh no, they're putting one on Government Hill. <laughs> If a father is absent, young boys will look for male figures to set the rules for how to behave and survive in the world. 
And believe me, there's a lot of folks out there who showed them the way. When I was a little boy in Washington, D.C., very young, probably maybe eight, nine years old, and they used to have junkies using heroin. And they would be in a house half the size of the church, and they would just be on the floor shaking and rolling. And me and my cousin, my nephews, we would come and we would peep in the window. And the pushers would say, get away from here. This is not good. They would run us away from it. But what they do now, <laughs> come on, you want some of this? Yeah. Try it. Let me, let, me, let me let you try it. It'll make you feel good. Before you know it, you've hooked on something. I, I, I ride at anchors all the time. And I've seen people. Young people. And they, they, they weren't born mentally disturbed. This is stuff they've gotten on the street that done mess their minds up. And you know why they were on the street? They were looking for daddy. Where are you, daddy? Are you my daddy? Are you my daddy? He said, yeah, I'm your daddy. Let me give you something to make you feel at home. And before you know it, they done lost their mind. Walking the street with no clothes on. Because they're looking for Abba. Life point number three. You may not know it, but I've been adopted. Because see, although fathers let you down, And, and this is what most people put it on. I'm this way because my daddy wasn't there. I'm this way because mama wasn't there. But did you know that there is an eternal adoption agency? That there's an Abba waiting to adopt you? Would you lose your life? Because daddy wasn't there. Would you lose your life because mama wasn't there? I know you came from a broken home, but would you lose your life? And there is an etern a eternal home that's waiting to adopt you. There's a God that sits high. Say, come on, you can be my sons. You can be my daughters. You no longer have to depend on that dead be dad. You no longer have to depend on that druggy mama. Come on, and I'll be your father. I'll be your Abba. I don't care what daddy did. I got a new daddy. Oh, Jesus, help me. My life is not predicated on what Jolie McRae was. My life is not predicated on what Mary Fraser McRae was. But my life uh, is a surrender around Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Uh, once I became to know my new adopted daddy, my life changed. Uh, my time, everything in about me changed. I no longer try to imitate Jolie. I no longer I try to imitate Mary. But I got a new father. I wish somebody in here had that father. And you were that father comes into your life he wipes away all pain he wipes away all thoughts he wipes away all bad times he wipes away now my life has changed you may not have known it but I've been adopted a long time ago the Lord say for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. 
You don't have to fear how bad daddy used to be. You don't have to fear where you, what family line you came from. You don't have to fear how sinful your family were. You don't have to fear because your daddy was a drug dealer, was a pimp. You don't have to fear because your mother walked the street. You don't have to fear because your parents are no good. You don't have to fear because you're ashamed of your mother and father. But there is a new, new freedom. Somebody say new freedom. But you have received the spirit of adoption. Tasha, when you get to heaven, you might be able to get you a job there. <laughs> what that place you work for, DSS, CSS, some kind of SS, uh, you might be in heaven uh, helping all the adopted children. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, but I'm glad today uh, that I no longer have to worry about my lineage. Uh, I don't have to worry about where I came from, who I came from, because none of that matters. It Longer. I put my trust in Jesus because he is the one that have kept me all these years. He is the one that made me who I am and I can call him up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. When I need a father, my father died in 1979, but I've never been without a father because he promised uh, that he'll never leave you. Uh, in 79, uh, my daddy packed up uh, and leave me behind. Uh, but my father, which is in heaven, uh, he promised uh, that he'll never leave me, uh, nor forsake me. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, in 1997, uh, my mama packed up uh, and left me behind. Uh, but God uh, is still here. And so those of you uh, that's been parent hurt, uh, that been daddy hurt, uh, that been mama hurt, uh, I just stop by to tell you, uh, there is another Abba, and his name uh, is Jesus. Uh, I don't care what you went through. Uh, I don't care what you're going through. Uh, if you just trust uh, in Jesus, uh, it's going to be uh, all right. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, in here today, uh, do you know Abba? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, if you don't know him, uh, I just like to introduce you uh, to Abba. Uh, he's my father. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, wherever I need him, uh, he is there. He's just like uh, I was the daughter when I walk in a place uh, and I look at Abba and say, Abba, these things uh, sons want. Uh, Abba said, you can have it. Thank you, Jesus. He's just like I was. To Donna, if somebody mess with me, thank you, Jesus. You got to fight with Abba. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to let nobody mess with my daughter. Thank you, Jesus. Sons, you might get by. But daughters, uh, no, no, no. Uh, you got to treat my daughter right. Uh, why? Because I am Abba. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, and I look after my child. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, and I have an Abba. And he looks. He looks after me. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Uh, he looks after me. Uh, when I get up in the morning, uh, he shakes the seat uh, that I'm all right. Uh, when I'm going through the day, uh, he watches over me. Uh, when anybody mess with me, he says, stand still. I'll fight you better. I'm talking about my Abba. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I love you, Father. I love you. There's none like you. Nobody can treat me like you. I love you, Father, because you've been too good. You've been too kind. I love you, Father. You've been more to me. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. I love you, Father. You've been a father to me. You've been a mother to me. I love you, Father, because you have been better to me than I've been to myself. Anybody know my daddy? Anybody know my father? 
Do you have him in your life? Do you know him in the partner of your sins? Don't care how daddy used to be. I got a new daddy. Look at somebody and say, ah, I have a new daddy. And his name is Jesus, the lady of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the great I am. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the first. He's the last. He's my daddy. Is he yours? Is he yours? Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Abba. Abba. I'm so glad that I can look at him and anything I need in a daddy, I can find it in him. Anything I need in life, I can find it in him. Because he's Abba, Father. I, I look at my daddy and I hold him up with high esteem. Daddy did what he did. But daddy was a daddy. He didn't father me in the world and left me. All the acts of me is from Friday night to Sunday night. Let me have my time. <laughs> and, and I'll promise you that you'll always have a roof over your head. And you'll always have food on your table. I'm not going to go out and stay. I'm talking about my daddy. This ain't got nothing to do with your daddy. He said, I'm not going to go out and stay out all night. In fact, I, I just want to go down to the liquor store, get my liquor, and come back home. That's the longest I've ever seen my dad stay away from home. The time it takes to go to the liquor store <laughs> and come back home. And if you don't mess with him, <laughs> he'll sit right there. I'm trying to teach y'all liquor drinkers. How you drink your liquor? He, he will sit right there. He will drink his liquor. He'll eat his food and he'll go to sleep. If you don't mess with him. But of course, <laughs> my mama lived with him probably 60 years. He probably been drinking all 60 years. But every weekend, it was strange to her. Mama, what did daddy do last weekend? <laughs> you need to learn your companion. That's good. That's good. That's good. But they were good people. And I love them. But I love my adopted family more. <laughs> Come on, stand to your feet. Alba, somebody high, high like, Alba. Alba. If you don't have a father, and I know that there are thousands of young people, even old people that have never gotten over it, that are still looking back at mistakes that your daddy made. And you're out there trying to find a father that can't do you no good. The worst father in the world with you is better than one you find on the street. So today, I invite you to my father. He, he'll always be there for you. He don't go away. He don't take vacations. He's always there. And today we are praying for you. Those of you that have issues in life. And, and I, I want you to make a commitment today. That today you're going to stop worrying about daddy. Jesus. 
Because whatever happened back then, the only thing that will make it right is to find a new daddy. And, and if, you, if you're good enough and you, you treat, and when you get this new daddy in place, if you do the right thing, and I've seen this over and over, where he'll make daddy right. He'll make mama right. So if you want mama and daddy to be right, then you get right. And watch God tra- change everybody. Because his desire that everybody be saved. And one day you can introduce your parents to him and say, Mama, Daddy, I want you to meet my new father. And guess what, Mama, Daddy? He wants to adopt you too. In some of the Asian countries, you, you go and you marry a daughter. And you, you thought you married the daughter. But you actually married the whole family. <laughs> and your mom and daddy moved in. Sisters and brothers moved in. <laughs> but that's the kind of daddy we got. He just don't marry you. He just don't adopt you. He adopts the whole family. God wants to save your whole family. God wants to make your whole family right. Abba. Father, gracious Father, I thank you now for this day you've given us. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, and thank you for being Abba, our Father. I thank you for all the fathers that are represented here today, those that are on media. I pray that this day be a new day in their lives. I know many of them have done the best they could, Lord. But I just ask that you give them new mercy, new strength. That from this day forward, they'd just be better than they've all ever been in their lives. I pray for their companion that they'll be understanding. And that they will not be judgmental. If everybody do their part, Lord, this world will be a better place. Thank you for even in our mess up, you fix up. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord, we'll always give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. I bless your people this day. In Jesus' name we pray. God's people say amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. You may be seated. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for hanging in there. I just wanted you to meet my daddy. And, uh, because he is Abba, Father. He's the great I am. And I thank God for being the head of our lives. Today is a special day. And I just, I, I am appreciative of the men we have in Praise Temple. Um, I see potential. We're not a church full of women. I love the women. I love what they do. But you got to give me some men. You got to give me some balance. Amen. I thank God for all of the men that are stuck in here over the years. And we're even thanking God for those that are coming. Amen. So God bless you today. Heaven smile upon you. It's time for our offering uh, as we prepare ourselves for giving uh, those of you that are giving in person, uh, ushers are available for, with envelopes, uh, and they will take your offering. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Those of you online that want to contribute to the work that we are doing, uh, you may give by cash apping us at Dollar Sign Praise Temple, Alaska, or you can text the word GIVE to uh, 833-676-0308. Or if you have the Give Levi app, you can search for Praise Temple Anchorage, Alaska, and you can give to us. Uh, as always, we thank you for sh- sharing with us. Thank you for being a part of our service. And we pray that God's blessing be upon you and that he forever uh, keep you in his plan. Uh, if you need us, you can remember to call us at our phone number, 907 258 
9682, and we'll be happy to pray for you. God bless you. We'll see you again next time. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise Temple.